What's up guys? Welcome to my channel, I'm Heidi and if you're new to my channel please hit the subscribe button, turn on all post notifications and smash the thumbs up button and in today's video I'm going to be reading the 20 secrets in Rugrats that Nickelodeon kept from us. So number 9, the terrifying Spongebob Squarepants connection. If you were a fan of both Rugrats and Spongebob Squarepants, you got the ultimate treat when Rugrats in Paris first made its theatrical debut. That's because an unfinished episode of the latter, entitled Shanghai, played before the movie began. However, the episode isn't for those who easily spook. It featured a scene so scary, in fact, that it had to be taken out. When the episode finally made its appearance on television, it depicted Squidward tumbling into the abyss with a skeleton laden backdrop adorning the shot. It wasn't completely done away with, though, those frightening skeletons. They were changed to spaghetti, and certain kids everywhere wouldn't have so many sleepless nights after being exposed to the creepy original version. Number 8. Charles' Creepy Sock Puppet Turkey is quite the pessimist at times, and it's put on full display in the episode Chucky's Wonderful Life. <sighs> in it, a guardian angel shows Chucky what life would have been like if he were never born. After he starts to regret mistakes he's just made, one of the darkest things he's shown is the state his dad, Chaz, is in without him. It depicts Chaz talking to a sock puppet called Socky, whom he speaks with because he doesn't have a son to talk to. It's equal parts sad and depressing. It's certainly darker than most other cartoons of its kind. So don't feel bad about Chucky, yourself Chucky. Your dad would be talking to a sock puppet if you weren't around. Oh, and Angelica would be obese, I think that's what it says. Go figure. Number seven, using the experience of b being bullied. We've already mentioned just how horrible Angelica is on the show, but it turns out that her sadistic attitude st stems from some real life experience. Yes, mastermind of the show, Paul Gomain used some of his own personal one ends for the character. Gomain was bullied by a real life Angelica, and he never forgot about it. So when it came time to figure out the cast of Rugrats for, of cast of characters for Rugrats, he made sure to include a cartoon version of his real life tormentor. <laughs> In fact, Gomain was so adamant for her inclusion on the show that he fought tooth and nail with the other writers to ensure she made it in. Why? He thought it would teach kids to spot real bullies in their own life clever. Number 6. The Presence of a Not So PG Walk Group. I'd hazard a guess that most fans of Rugrats have never listened to post punk outfit Devo. However, they do have a considerable presence on the show. Not only was the theme song written by the band's font man, Mark Mothersbaugh, but Chucky's look was also modeled after him as well. It's certainly surprising to see them so heavily integrated into the kids' show, considering the fact that they were all the same. The group that garnered 
controversy in the past for socks like Mongoloid and Ribbit on this likeness to Chucky. Mother's Bug told Split Cider in 2012, we both had thick hair, we were both nearsighted, and had a pretty wild hair back then. I didn't have kids yet, so it still had color in it. <laughs> I just yawned. Uh, number five, Angelica's intimating inspiration. So keeping with the show's more conventionally accepted origins, we've established that Angelica was based on a real life bully, but did you know that she also had another inspiration? Yes, it was none other than Dallas, own J.R. Earring. It brought it was brought on by the fact that Angelica's voiceover actress Cheryl Chase had trouble playing the bratty young girl and looked further afield for guidance. Writer on the cartoon Steve Bigston then told Chase that she should look to J.R. Ewing for inspiration. He told her that Angelica was the R.J. Ewing of Rugrats, helping Trace to finally nail down her intimidating nature. So, she's not known for her eloquence or steely glare, but you can you can definitely see the similarities now. There's an example of one show helping another. Number four, an unfortunate spot. Speaking of Paul Gomain, it turns out the Rugrats linchpin wasn't just fighting for Angelica's inclusion, but also sparring with the show's production company. Klasky C. Supo, Kiss Supo, in general, general, as head writer and producer for the part of the show's creation. However, a dispute with Arlene Klasky and Gable Kasupo made Gourmet get up and leave the show after it was cancelled for the first time. <sighs> after being given the green light again, it shows the show was made by an entirely new set of writers. However, many asserts that this marked the downfall of the show, never really being able to match the quality of the shows in which Gourmet pinned with his team of scribes. Unfortunately, both Gorman and Klasky Kasupo aren't able to discuss the falling out due to legal reasons. Number three, Tommy was voiced by a woman. It's not just Tommy Pickles who was voiced by a woman, but the rest of the babies, too. Yes, instead of getting male vo to play the baby boy's voice, females were used instead due to their high-pitched voices. Tommy was voiced by Elizabeth Daly. Chucky Finister was voiced by Christine Kavanaugh. Phil DeVille was voiced by Kath Susie. And Dill Pickles was voiced by Tara Strong. Despite the fact that these babies are male in the popular cartoon. This is one where so the writers didn't want you to know about because it's quite possible that it will be annoyingly stuck in your head for the next time you watch the show. Sorry. Number two, Whiptaw got the show sued. Remember Whiptaw, the green dinosaur that Tommy used to carry around with him? No, I don't even remember that. Well, it seems to 
the toy got the show into a spot of trouble in 2002 because of its uncanny likeness to Godzilla. Toho, who possessed the rights to Godzilla, sued the show for its resemblance to the creation, which is why its appearance in the cartoon diminished in the show's later years. It's a shame, too, because Webcar played a pivotal role in many episodes, usually coming to life in some of the more out those segments. With the merchandising that the toy got outside of the show, it's no real surprises that Toho put a stop to it. Still, it can never be said that it wasn't a welcome addition to the show. No, number one, the last one, hating on their own creation. We touched on writer Paul Gourmet's push for Angelica to be included in the, the show, but just why did he have to fight so hard for it? Well, it's dance from co-creator Arlene Klasky's resentment of the character. She hated the rebellious young girl for a long time, citing her bullying nature as being too much for a children cartoon. In fact, she didn't start taking to Angelica until the Rugrats movie came out. After its release, she said, I think she's going to I think she's great for the show. I love Angelica. Of course, despite her spoil attitude, Angelica became one of the highlights of the show, serving as the perfect contrast to the other sweet children. So, there you have it. After reading those 20 dark secrets, you'll show... We'll show you never watch World Guts the same way again. That's the end of this video. If you like content like this, please hit the subscribe button, turn on all post notifications. And smash the thumbs up button. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.